Are you sure we're broadcasting there, five minutes? Should be. There might be a slight lag, but we're we're live. No, I can't see anything yet. We'll do it live. We'll do it, it, should we'll be. Do it live. Should be. You sure? You got the intro going on? No, it's no intro. There's no intro, yeah. Not oh, today. What? Alright, gotcha now. Yeah, we are live and well. Can't put that. Do you love the intro? Well, while Putna does get uh, use a bit of a toe and try to set the fast look for Green B just to wind off with him. Uh, Alright, stop showing off Putna. Let's go. Alright, hello everyone and welcome to another fantastic round of Wheel to Wheel Racing, proudly supported by Track Racer. Joining me in the commentary box tonight is ZD. Yeah, mate, how you going? Long time no commentating with you. What's been going on? Yeah, not much, mate. Just hanging out. And, of course, bringing you the visuals and replay coverage, we have Fine Moves. Hello, everyone. So, tonight, we bring you round six coverage of Lobby B Racing at Sardinia Road Track A. With the track surrounded by fences and having very little runoff, it really is shaping up to be a cracking couple of races. Of course, like normal, we're going to start with a five-minute qualifying very shortly, no fuel and tyre, and then we'll jump straight into an eight-lap race with fuel and tyre wear turned back on before a short break and then a reverse grid 16-lap showdown. ZD, I've seen you've been doing a bit of practice this week. Tell me what your thoughts are on the strategy for tonight's races. Well, uh, the, first, um, the first race is definitely a no-stopper. You lose too much time in the pit stop. With the second race being a 15-lapper, it's definitely a one-stop race and it's all about conserving fuel and conserving tyres. I know with with my practicing and the practicing I've been doing with Rexy, um, the Golden Mullet, G-Man, G-Force itself, and um, Mountain Goat, that it's that front right tyre that takes the most punishment around this track. How have you yeah. been? How have you been finding it, Footner? Yeah, I think with the uh, the new BOP updates, uh, it's really shaken things up this week. Cars that uh, used to be uh, quite powerful are now no longer as powerful in uh, GR4. We obviously haven't been exposed to GR3 BOP yet, but yeah, it's certainly shaken things up in GR4. And uh, I'm kind of keen to see what's going to be um, what's going to be on top. I think Lexus is going to be very strong showing. Yeah, I uh, agree. Jags as well. Jags have uh, dropped a lot of weight. They're quite light now. Yeah, I agree. The, um, even though Lexus, with the new BOP update, Lexus lost a bit of power, but the um, the massive weight uh, loss they've lost at the same time has made that a very formidable force for this track. Um, I don't ag I don't really agree with you with the Jaguar. I think Merc's a little bit stronger, even though the Bob update gave uh, made the Merc a little bit more heavier. I still think because this is a pretty much a box, you have a look at it. There's pretty much all left handers. And the power difference between the Jag and the Merc, I think the Merc just has a slight advantage over the Jag. Unfortunately, so the guys like Hamo who are running the 8.6 are probably the worst off for this uh, track, knowing that the lack of power that they have. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how it all shapes out, that's for sure. So I'll do a bit of a run through the grid at the moment, show you who's racing. Uh, leading the pack around the outlap at the moment, Rexy in that Vodafone Mustang there. He's got a bit of a gap, so no one's going to be in his toe. So Rexy going to be looking uh, just to use that clean track and set a blinding lap. Behind him, we've got K-Boy in his Shell Mustang and Evil One close in the toe in that Lexus as well. So Evil One trying to get a bit of an advantage. Oh, as K-Boy just sends it a bit wide. Possibly going to get Evil One quite close for the start of this hot lap. CCH and Pagani also there. Uh, everyone's trying to sort their positions out now. They're all a bit too close for comfort, I reckon. Gonna what see, do you uh... think... Yeah, sorry about that. But now, I was saying, what do you think is the um, strategy for qualifying? Do you do something what Rexy's doing, running out of front, or do you do something like what Pagani, CCH, K-Boy and Pagani is trying to get each other slip? I think what you've really got to do here is uh, find... you got to... Jump in the practice lobbies during the week. Find someone who's very similar pace to you and try and find them in qualifying. Obviously, it's not that easy because it spits you out of the pits random. Oh, we're seeing K-Boy and Pagani side by side, losing a lot of time there. Anyway, as I was saying, yeah, um, find someone who's about your pace that you're not going to catch up to and start the lap about seven to eight tenths behind them. So then by the end of that lap, if you both have a good lap, you should be right on them and you should pick up that time um, and jump them in the qualifying orders. 
We'll continue yeah. our grid uh, walkthrough at the moment. Uh, back from uh, K-Boy there, he's on the back of that battle train, is uh, Tombo. Tombo and another Mustang. So Mustang's dominating the uh, the appearances here in Lobby B. Yeah. We've also got Antichrist back there and his Aston Martin. He's just gone around the outside of Nightwalker who's had an issue. So Nightwalker's going to have to shape up and uh, have another go on the next lap. Hammy to the bone in his 86 following Nightwalker there, picking up a little nice bit of slipstream. Then we've got Troy HQ, Living Fallen back. He's ready to um, start up this lap. He has been out at the S section down there with uh, Rip Doc in that beautiful Jag and Vintage Ray Dillon right arm. Um, Finishing off the pack. Yeah, so you see Troy HQ just pull off there. He knows his lap wasn't on the card, so now he's just going to try and slot into Vintage's slipstream and just get a good uh, good lap in. So we just had the tyres rolling through soon. Pagani set the fastest first sector. CCH with the fastest second sector. Wait to see who comes through for the third sectors, but lap times are going to start to roll in now. Uh, I know that Rexy had a bit of a messy late there first half, but still pulls out 149, which is a very, very competitive. Yeah, CCH the to the top for a visual pole with a 48-3 there in that McLaren. Pagani only a tenth behind. So who do you think going to win this one? Or win the fourth one anyway? I think uh, Rip Dog's going to be quite strong. He had some uh, good pace and some practice lobbies. Uh, he's, he's got to sort out that qualifying because at the moment he's uh, in fifth. But also Pagani. With that new Lexus update, I really think Pagani is going to have a good showing here. And he's uh, he's got he's got a bit of backup there with Evil 1, second and third provisionally so far. I, I agree, but i got to admit the um, guy that I, I teach and also who is leading qualifying at the moment, CCH, I think. The McLaren is uh, a force to be reckoned with around this track, even though it's a little bit lighter, it doesn't have as much power as the Lexus. Um, having that seventh, um, seventh gearing and the gearing around this track, I think it's, I think it'll be, on, it'll be on pole, it'll definitely be on pole and probably take out race one and race two. Uh, I've done some practice with the Guardian, he, he did hit a, th he did hit a 47, um, so I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to see what he can do with another lap here, especially if he picks up, finds a bit of toe, which he is. He's actually in CCH's toe, so it's probably the best place for Pagani to be right now. He's just yeah. got to keep it together, and uh, I think he's going to net himself uh, a pole position here. Yeah, I think so. Oh, and they come together. I think CCH caught up with the even one as well. Yeah, so CCH not looking like he's going to better this lap, but Pagani's now going to have the slip all the way down the straight. He's had the slip the whole race. He's gone purple again in Sector 2. Oh, I think this is going to be a good one from Pagani. Rexy jumps up to fifth there in his Mustang with a 49 dead. So not a bad position for a Mustang to be in. Oh, and Pagani, unlucky, unfortunately couldn't better his time. Yeah, Pagani just lost a bit too much in the first sector by the looks of it there. Made up a bit of time, but just not enough. There's 17 legends joining us, 19 legends joining us now on the Twitch stream. Hello, everyone. G-Man in the chat. Subi, g'day, Subi. Soul Slayer, looking forward to have you back next week. Piper, Warpath, and Zoo. Chuck oh, some comments in as well. <laughs> so there we go. Qualifying done. CCH on the top. We got eight laps around Sardinia Road Track A. I have Probably going to be a no-stop for most people, I reckon. You do lose about nine seconds in the pits. But, uh, we'll we'll see who blinks. I'm going to be sorry right from the hammy from right the back with the 8-6 lack of power and can't get off the line. He's going to have to play catch up from the get-go as well. As we can yeah, get so right on board with the uh, pole sitter here, see what CCH can do, if he can fend that Lexus off into the first corner. Lexus gets a great launch. Both Lexus is actually vintage there, coming under, uh, putting uh, CCH under pressure there. Rip Doc looking for the inside as well. Uh, four wide in sections. Pagani accelerates out to a lead. Rip Doc looking up the inside. Oh, oh he's, no. he's gone wide. His contact. They've managed to keep that pretty clean. Tombo has accelerated Tombo. around the inside of everyone there. Tombo, the big winner in that incident. Pagani still keeping second, though. CCH losing out the most, dropping down to fourth, with Rip Doc moving up to third. Vintage Evil One Troy Nightwalker all following them close. There's contact with Rip Doc. Rip Doc's around. Rip Doc goes around. He managed. Yes, he's in the fence. Yes, he's around. Can we get a replay oh. of that by moves. We sure can. Let's do oh, it. Oh, it's all 
there's a lot of action. Oh, Vintage is around as well. Who was it? Who went into the fence? Rip Doc there. Rip Doc got contact. Here we go. Here we go as we watch the arm replay. On board with Rip Doc at the moment. So he's, yeah, uh, so Rip Doc's going to come around this left. He's going to get some contact into the right. See what happens. Uh, he just got nudged into the sand. Sand, yeah, and then oh, off gets Corbin, there we go, and just oh, right gosh. around it. Oh, nasty. Nasty. Yeah, yeah. so just a little bit of contact from CCH up the inside. Don't know if that was um, aggressive or not. It may have just been a bit of a racing incident, a bit clumsy between the two, but it has resulted in a significant amount of time loss to Rip Doc and uh, Vintage also suffering there. Vintage all the way back down in last, but... We uh, jump up to the top there. Tombo in his Mustang leads Pagani around the last corner onto the start-finish straight. Tombo starting from fifth or sixth position there, can't quite remember, and uh, straight up to first. So fantastic effort there from Tombo. We know he's great on his tyres as well, so it's going to be a great finish between these guys all the way through to lap eight. And uh, also, uh, also we mentioned with Tombo, he drives automatic as well, so, you know, keeping that kind of pace up with that, Selecting the gears, you know, it just shows you the skill that Tombo has with that, um, with the Mustang. And there we go, and as Ripped, um, as Pagani takes the long way around, does, um, takes, pull, um, takes the lead over Tombo, just under the braking there, just showing the strength of the, uh, Lexus. Yeah, the Lexus very good at top end now after that update. It's also, uh, can break a fair bit later, so the heavier cars like the Mustang are gonna have to break a couple meters early which does open the door for a Lexus to send a move around the outside. And with a lot of corners in this track, you can actually make the outside work. The uh, hairpin coming up at the end of the straight they've just entered now is actually very popular for outside moves, as uh, Mountain Goat will tell you, if he's uh, joining us on the stream tonight. <laughs> but it's all, about, the, it's all about the run, though, because it's all uphill, and if you stop up that blind corner about two uh, corners ago, you won't be able to make that uh, move stick around the outside, as Tombo is looking for the move on the outside as we speak. Starting deep, I think even one might get Tombo here on the under break. Yeah, Tombo should be able to hold it around the outside, which he does comfortably. Now it's just a matter of who can see. It's evil one drops in behind. Very much single file through this next left right. Or right left as it's gonna be now. CCH just sitting back in fourth as well, trying to clutch onto the back. He's bringing Troy and Rex in the toe with him. We're gonna have a six-way battle for the lead very shortly, I can feel, especially with the long straight coming up and everyone in slipstream range. After positions have settled in, uh, we'll drop down the order a bit. In seventh place, we've got Anti Christ pumping around the track in his Aston. K-Boy right in the toe there as well. Rip Dog finding his way up to ninth after that incident. So uh, he's not too not too far off the pace. And with five, six more laps to go, he could uh, get himself a couple more positions with the pace he's been showing in practice. Gas and Greg and Hammy are locked in a battle for 10th and 11th there. Uh, vintage after his lap one incident, uh, managing to find his way up to 12. It looks like Nightwalker's had an absolute shocker somewhere. Very unfortunate for Nightwalker. McLaren got good pace. We know Nightwalker's great on his tyres. I think we should jump back up to the leave. Um, Bigani and Tombo are having a great hustle with um, bringing back our Evil One and um, CCH. Yeah, so it is now a six way battle. Top six separated by less than two seconds now. Just over two now, as it shows. Everyone going purple through sector one there. It is a very close. That is a long train. I think it's going to be a very close race throughout this race between these top six drivers. Yeah, we know the Mustang is a, a bit of a heavy tyre user, but Tombo is very good on his tyres. So, uh, it's got, oh, it's Tombo looking around the outside. Just oh, a bit of an overlap. It, <laughs> They've sorted it out, luckily. That could have been very dangerous. Oh, it's a, we're going to definitely go on defensive. I think he knows where the strength of that Mustang is. It is definitely around that hairpin before. Yeah, very hard bit of the track they're just navigating now. As you see Troy, uh, yeah, very see hard. Troy but Troy's gone wide as well. Very hard oh. to follow. Oh. CCH oh. and Evil One coming together. Evil One with a handful of opposite lock trying to pull it up for the corner there. <laughs> well, well controlled there, Evil One. And I think uh, Rexy just behind has um, is alongside uh, Troy HQ as well. 
Just yeah, Troy you. just put a foot wrong uh, going through that blind left-hander. He just sailed a bit wide, put all four on the grass, and uh, he's now under pressure from Rexy. Yeah, it's going to be but, uh, That contact back at the hairpin between Evil and CCH has gifted the uh, front pair a bit of breathing space now as Tombo is trying to send it around the outside. Pagani says, no, I'm going to take that position back. So Tombo settles right in and glues his front bumper to Pagani's rear. And as uh, CCH is taking the quick way around, the short way around, E1 just doing a move under the brakes there, showing you the lightness of the uh, McLaren over the uh, heaviness of the Lexus there. Yeah, Evil One using a bit a bit more of his tyre than uh, everyone around him at the moment. So uh, possibly due to those slides, the contact with uh, CCH, every time you slide, you are going to take a bit of life out of your tyres. Bombo is still glued to Pagani's bar, though, as they uh, enter one of the longest straights on the circuit. It does have a few bends, but we do consider it a straight because there is absolutely no lifting or braking through these slight bends. Now, if you Garni's going to take the inside. Tombo wants it. Tombo flexes out <laughs> wide. He's going to break late, try and chuck it around the outside. There's just not enough of an overlap. So Pagani holds on for another hairpin. Oh, if, if you were Tombo there for now, where would you make your move? Where would you be planning your move, knowing the difference between the Lexus and the... Um, I wouldn't make a move until possibly the last two laps. I'd sit oh. on uh, Pagani's bumper and uh, just try and pressure him into a mistake. Save a bit of tyre. You don't have to save fuel. Um, but if I was catching in the slipstream, I'd be giving Pagani a bit of a bump just to let him know I'm there. Um, Fine, can, can we get a replay on? Can we get a replay on CCH and Evil One? I think there was a bit of contact just before just the blind corner there. Yeah, sure, let's do it. Because just looking at the time difference, is it dropped uh, yeah. way off the leaders? So yeah, CCH C has front end damage there as well. We just I'm caught sure the end of that. Oh, there and we he's, go. yeah. Oh, so it's a it's a carbon copy of the uh, the incident lap the lap before. CCH has just got his nose into Evil One's rear quarter. I'm not sure who was at fault there, uh, but it's exactly what happened in the last lap. So after all that, Evil One's dropped down to sixth now. CCH has found his way up to third, but at the sacrifice of a significant amount of tyre wear. Yeah, and it just shows you just battling around this track, you just lose time. Like, they're, they're on top two have opened a 2.3 second gap over this yeah. battle for sure. Tracks like this with fences all around the outside are very, very unforgiving. It is all about maintaining mid-corner speed and having the optimum line through each of the corners. Otherwise, you will just lose time. Because it's just a tight corner into a massive flat-out section, it's all about those corner exits. And if you're going too wide through a bunch of corners, you're just going to lose that mid-corner speed and therefore you're going to suffer for the whole length of those straights. We've got some nice racing here with K-Boy and Antichrist back in 8th, 9th. Oh yeah, Rip yeah, Doc in there Rip as Doc well. As well. So Antichrist yep. up the inside of Rip Doc. Who's going to blink? You can't go too wide, fellas. They're trying oh, to. They're trying to. Oh, oh it's messy. Rip oh. Doc. Oh, no. Rip Doc Hit grabs a fence. handful of inside fence. It spears him into the outside fence and the game just grabs his car and stops it. Vintage doing a nice job to avoid a stationary ripped off there. That's unfortunate. After making a huge recovery after that early, um, the first lap incident coming through the six, uh, six uh, battling for seven. I feel sorry <laughs> for ripped dog himself. Yeah, so Antichrist being the real winner out of that, I guess. K Boy dropping back into that battle pack between Gas and Greg and Hammy there, losing a position to Gas and Greg in the process. No, I got a shout out to Hammy there. Um, being in the A6, so I think it is. Oh, this, cables um, into the sand. That's unfortunate. But yeah, going back to Hammy, especially that A6, being the most underpowered car for pretty much a square track like this, um, coming from last to ninth place, I uh, you know good, uh, good shout out to him. Just showing. Uh, we have a change ready. for the lead. We do have a change for the lead. Tombo has sent the move on Pagani. I don't know exactly where it happened, but I've just tuned in and they were side by side around that left hander. So Tombo takes the lead now on lap six. Pagani does not want to give it up though. Tombo's going to have the inside. Pagani just tucks into that last little bit of slipstream. Apex nicely found by Tombo there. Yeah. Nothing Pagani could have done there. Excellent driving, Tombo. 
Fireware very similar between the two as well. So it's, it's going to be an absolute cracking finish. And if Gosh. they keep battling, they might bring Rexy into Look this. Look at He's this, man. Back. Well, yeah, Rexy was showing great pace as well in that forward. So it's not surprising to see him up in third at the moment. Yeah, it is a track where tyre wear is quite high, but uh, because there's such long straights, the fuel, the lighter fuel load offsets the tyre quite a bit, and you actually don't get a, a massive deficit in lap times between your first and your last lap. It's quite a nice track like that. Yeah, it's all about getting that flow. This track, I have I know with all the practice I've done, it's all about flow. If you can't get the right flow of this track, you just chew up your tyres. Yeah, that's correct. So Tombo and Pagani still battling out in front there, both pulling it up nicely for turn one, using all of the track there. Tombo still holds the lead. Rexy dropping off a little bit, possibly coming under pressure from the evil one there. Evil one looking to take that last step of the podium from Rex. If they both work together, they may be able to find the uh, the back of the top two there. Uh, Pagani's hungry. Pagani wants his win. Tombo wants his win as well. I, I don't know if um, Rexy and um, Ewan you know, can catch up to the top two. Just looking at the tyre wear, they're just using a little bit more tyre than the top two. CCH comfortably back in fifth, just behind the uh, battle pack for third we were talking about. And Troy leading another another bit of a battle pack for sixth there. No one really close enough to make a move back in the grid, though. Can't say the same about the front, front two battle packs, though. They are absolutely stuck together like chalk and cheese at the moment. I think for the last lap, I think we have to stick with the top arm um, there. For, for oh, they're both wide. And... Oh, they've both oh. gone wide. And Pagani's still looking up the inside. He gets and the overlap. It. Wow. Oh, he pulls it up. Yes. He yeah. just slides across the inside of Tombo. Tombo yeah. having to back out. He gets the slipstream for the start-finish straight, though, as they're going to cross the line for the penultimate lap. I mean, for the last lap. I think we have to stay for this battle. It's, it's going to be on for young and old. As yeah, we've got a battle for breaking... first and a battle for third. So podium positions are not resolved yet. Someone's looking at it, going around the outside of the gunny. Good racing, boys. Nice and close. So Tombo's followed Pagani around for a fair bit of the race. He's going to know where he's strong and where Pagani's weak. So now the onus is on Tombo to uh, make that move happen where it counts and Pagani to defend where he knows he's a bit weaker than the Mustang. So very important for Tombo to get a fantastic drive out of this corner. Being only three tenths back, he's going to have very strong slipstream. I think he just nails that corner. He's going he to have has the run. Got the drive, yeah. It's three tenths. It's under three tenths soon. I don't know if he's going to be close enough. Oh, it's closing. Oh no, I don't think he's not close enough. There you go. Two tenths. Defense. Is he going to be late on the brakes? Each throw, oh, sliding Ooh. into the corner, sliding out of the corner as well. <laughs> Tombo, all sorts of sideways at the moment. Oh, Rex, the battle pack for third's taken off as well. CCH up to fourth on the back of Rex. I don't know where to look. We don't know where to look yet. Oh, we'll just jump to the front for the last move. This is the last place that Tomo can make a move over Bugani. Gets the overlap on the outside. Breaks late. Bugani dead going very defensive. Bugani Passes pulls it up on the apex. There's contact between the two. Smart defending there from Bugani. Oh, everyone's wide in the background. Oh, oh, no, Rexy's gone from third to fifth. We might key that for a replay. We'll have a look at it later, though. Oh, no. It's, uh, it's a bit messy at the end there with that battle pack for third. Uh, Pagani crosses the line in first. Tombo in the Mustang second. CCH moves up from fifth to third in that last lap. Evil One stays in fourth. Rexy takes his fifth. Troy in sixth. Gas and Greg seventh. Antichrist eighth. Hammy to the bone in ninth. Vintage Racer tenth. Uh, Nightwalker, Ripdock, and K-Boy will be your last three. What an exciting race. Well, I am out of breath. <laughs> that was intense. Um, do you think we can get a replay on that incident with third place on that uh, penultimate oh, corner there? might be too late to watch that oh, now, goodness. isn't it? 
yeah, once it's once they start crossing the line, it's that's it for replays. Yeah, everyone everyone was too close. He didn't want to miss the uh, finishing order there. A bit of a bit of tossing and turning through that section uh, last lap there, but uh, no one no one losing massive amounts of time. A couple of positions lost, but we do score outright here at wheel to wheel. So it's not about where you finish in your lobby. It's about where you finish overall. So sometimes it's not smart to get in those battles, unless it is someone you're directly racing on the leaderboards. That way, it kind of doesn't matter. You're going to take them down with you, but you're still going to finish up on them. So you really do have to pick your battles. Not sure that we saw a lot of that happening in that lobby. <laughs> it looked very much each for their each for their own there. Everyone wants that uh, lobby victory. Yeah, and I'm just looking at Burgundy's time of 14 minutes, 53.9. Six one. That's a very competitive time. Knowing that our league runs of um, total um, time taken for each race, that is going to be a very competitive time. Probably shooting up right to the top of the list. Even give some of the Div One boys a uh, run for its money. Yeah, he was side by side with Tombo a bit, so I think the onus now is going to be on the other lobbies to uh, just learn from this. If they're tuning into the stream, you can really see the time lost between battling. So uh, you're going to have to stick that. Um, in the back of the mind and uh, remember that. But uh, based on the uh, results of race one there, who's your pick for race two, ZD? Uh, I gotta admit, I still have to put my money on CCH. I reckon those few mistakes definitely came out for him. It was very unlike uh, CCH to do that and I've been practicing with him a lot. But um, CCH and Tombo have to be my two pick for race two. Yeah, really? with a few key players as well, starting near the back. So, I'm going uh, with Richie. I'm going with Rexy. Rex. Yep. Rexy. Rexy yep. does start in front of the uh, top four as well, mm. so he's already got that track position advantage. If he can keep that through the uh, through the race, I'd, yeah, I think you're probably right. Rex got good pace. It's going to come okay. down to fuel with Rex, I think. Yeah, I agree. But you know, you, you can't again. You can't stop. Uh, you can't put your money off uh, Bugani and the Lexus as well. Like as we've been saying, that Lexus is very strong around this track, and Bugani's got this uh, that car hooked up all the way around. Yeah, it's not the easiest track to pass though, with so many corners allowing uh, outside moves. Uh, if you give someone the inside or the the outside, you can still manage to uh, pull away in front, regardless of where you are. It does require a bit of coordination between the two cars, and we do we do pride ourselves on sportsmanship, so we do like to see clean passes. Um, but yeah, it's going to be hard to come from last. Uh, I think I think the real winners here are going to be those that can save their fuel and jump that time up in the pits. Definitely. And now, Putna, is it that time for your lovely fun I, fact? I did smell something brewing. Uh. Strap yourself in your because it's time for everybody's favorite segment, Putna's Fun Facts. Yeah, unfortunately this time we are not broadcasting uh, the Facebook and uh, with the countdown and stuff, so we don't have the fancy visuals for you, but I am still bringing you a fun fact. Today we're back on animal reproduction and uh, male ducks. <laughs> ZD, did you know that a male duck actually loses its penis and regrows another one every year? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the? I did not know that. But, um... Oh, there we go. We've all learned something today. If you, wow. if you knew that, you're in the chat. You're lying. Uh, don't... <laughs> Uh, but also, going to make up last week to you guys as well. Uh, a lot of you guys tuned in last week. You did see the visuals, but we did lose audio. Uh, we are still learning about all this, but I'll, I'll give you a double fun fact today. So um, I think I think the guys are probably happy we don't have visuals today, so it's all good. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Um, Manta shrimps actually have the fastest uh, punch in the world. It is ten times faster than a human blink. Uh, yeah, it's actually faster than a twenty-two caliber bullet. Are you sure oh, about that? Foot? I think oh. you need to check that fact on that one. I'm pretty sure when um, Mantico gets behind five moves, I think his punch is faster than that of that shrimp. Oh, may maybe not quite ten times as fast as a blink, but maybe nine. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. We're pretty close. Yeah, five moves. I know that he's punted you off a few times. How do you? What do you think about that fact with uh, Mantico himself? Well, oh gosh, um, no, he's he's. He's he's good. He's he's young. He's improving. He's he's got a lot of skill. He hasn't punted too often. I mean, gosh, I'm guilty of that. I've punted him just as often, I think. 
And that just shows the maturity of Fire Moves right there. Very uh, diplomatic in his uh, opinions about that and go. But I do agree, we've all been uh, guilty of punting each other off once in a while. Yep. And Rex, and Rex here, look, just look in the comments, Rex here, who who's saying live here? I know that you're probably missing me that we're not commentating this week, but um, I'm curious. Well, who are you saying lied in the comments there, Rexy? Rexy's got it, man. <laughs> Possibly about the win. Rexy doesn't back himself, I don't think. He should back himself. Rexy's got great pace. He's a great clean racer, and uh, he's a fellow commentator. So you got you got to back the fellow commentators. It's not easy getting up here and uh, talking to talking to everyone <laughs> over a microphone commentating on a race, but uh, yeah, someone's got to do it. Uh, but, uh, but no, you, sound, look, you sound like a professional. You sound like you understand how to commentate and talk to the people even though you're not directly looking at them. Uh, absolutely not a professional over here. I've just uh, been a motorsport enthusiast my entire life. Uh, and I think just uh, some of the experiences I've learned over participating in that uh, helps me uh, understand what's going on, where to look and uh, what to look for more importantly. I think that's a very th um, the great thing about the um, this league. It's sort of like it brings those people with a very common interest together, where we can have some clean racing. As yeah, and even those who aren't interested, as long as it's exciting. Like I'm sure all of us are similar. If you if you don't follow a certain sport, but like the finals come on, a lot of guys really get into it. Or same as the Olympics. Like not too many people will be watching like you know your curling and your swimming and stuff like that throughout the year. But when the Olympics come on, it matters. Everyone loves that excitement when there's something on the line and that's what we bring in motorsport as we go ready for our uh, race to the um what we be i think yeah, we'll so jump on anti to, um i think we'll jump in on antichrist knowing that the Aten has a really good start usually and it's only about mid-pack i reckon that's where all the action is going to be at let's do so it k-boy takes pole with rip Dogs, uh lining up next to him on the front row oh there's a round already pagani's already around on the start line pagani What's happened there? We missed that. Might really? keep that for a replay. Yeah. Tune in later. Tune it up. See oh. where everyone settles in here. And as Rexy goes for an inside oh. move on, yeah, Hammy as well. <laughs> <laughs> Hammy letting him do it. Oh, Hammy didn't have to be so nice there, but uh, Hammy very sportsmanlike there. Rexy, uh, he's not sitting still. He wants to make those moves early. You got this, Rexy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can't give him the commentator's curse already. He's only let race uh, lap one, boys. Come on, he's up on him. So, Rip Doc opening up a 1.2 second lead already after only three corners. Nightwalker under pressure from Vintage in second. So, Rip Doc, we know he's got good pace. He was one of my picks, but he did have incidents in race one. So, I think uh, Rip Doc shaping up to be uh, a real contender for this one already, only halfway through lap one. Also, we also forgot about um, our fellow commentator, Vintage Racer. He's actually got a lot of pace and True. being in that Lexus as well. So, you know, that's someone we have to watch as well. That's right. Um, yeah, he's uh, under pressure from Antichrist. There's a bit of an overlap there. Oh, Antichrist just slots in the back there. They find their single file. CCH actually up to fifth on the back of that battle train there. So CCH finishing third, which meant he started in uh, oh, 11th. 13, 12, 11, yeah. CCH, 11th to fifth, really capitalizing from um, the turn one incidents and the start line incidents. Oh, nice move there by Antichrist. <laughs> Yeah, it's very good move there. Very nice and clean. Yeah, so but Vintage Racer dropping a position now under pressure from CCH. It's going to be interesting to see the uh, the top speed difference between the McLaren and the Lexus now. Well, actually, Vintage Racer trying to take that back from Antichrist. He's managed to get a bit more of an overlap. He's got third. Well, it just shows you that new um, the bop update. It just gives you, um, the Lexus does have a little bit more power. But the Lexus is insane. <laughs> The Lexus has great corner exit speed. Just down low, it is sensational. It pulls time on the Merc like you wouldn't believe. And then to match that, it's got the top speed as well. Yeah, we're just showing that slipstream. That McLaren being like, and just break deeper, and it's got um, fourth place over Antichrist. So Antichrist... Ooh, CCH nice. around the outside. Oh, that was nice. Very nice. Maybe what we'll do so we can uh, watch another replay in the future, we'll jump back and we'll watch that start replay now. All right. See so what actually happened Pagani, to Pagani. Yeah. Let's see. What have we got? All right. On board with Pagani. Oh, there's chaos in front. Oh. 
Oh no! Oh, there we go. Oh, well, it looks like someone jumped the start. I'm not sure who that was, but someone jumped the start. There was contact. They've come across no. someone else, and it's just I... all messy. Poor old Pagani there, starting the race <laughs> five seconds back from everyone else, basically. I don't think it was a jump start. I think it's just how the uh, eight six box down. I think someone ran the backside of um, Hammy there, like not realizing the eight six. Hammy should have been right up the grid, though. I'm not sure if that would have been Hammy. Tombo's doing all right as well. Tombo's back up in his sixth. Oh! No, I think it was Hammy. Yeah, well, look, it was just, it was just about. It was a Tombo few now with a run oh my between God. the middle of two of them. Oh, that would have been great. That would have been gonna the move of the year. He's going to get the move done on Vintage. No, they both give each other space. Oh, what a race this is shaping up to be. And again, that would have been superb. Just, it would have been superb if he could make it stick. But again, that Lexus and then um, that pop up plate, just showing how much power it has, giving the um, Mustang to run for its money down yeah, the front. Yeah, now Tombo is going to be in the slipstream of that Lexus. It may get him around Antichrist as well. Antichrist, the only one not picking up slipstream in this chain, and he is struggling for it. He's going to get swallowed by all four cars. Oh, there's, there's a punch. punch. Rexy in the back of Tombo. Rexy into the back of Tombo. Sent him into the barriers. Well, I'm there not you sure go. if there was any anything lag-based or if uh, maybe Rexy just got caught out by that four-car slipstream oh, no. and missed his braking marker. And Tombo's back to 11th there. Let's, Let's go, go to replay with that. Those. Not Let's sure what all... happened. Let's jump on board with uh, Rex and see what, see what happened here. So coming down the straight with Rexy... He's in the tow of four cars Tom. here, or three cars, sorry. Two cars. Whoa, I think he got punted in the back. Oh, he yep. did, yes. Rex, he was hit. By Evil One. Looks like Evil One up the back of Rexy, and then into the back of Tombo. Tombo being the big loser there. Oops. Evil One not redressing the positions either. Still sitting there in sixth. We'll let Very that. interesting. We'll, we'll I think we'll have the Stewart's. Yeah. Yeah. Stewart's going to have a busy week this one, I reckon. Uh, back to the racing now. CCH has found his way around Nightwalker, moving up to second. So CCH on a charge, two seconds back from uh, Ripdock, who's leading the field there. I think he's racer watch. keeping his fourth after uh, that turn one carnage we just witnessed. Antichrist also doing well to hang on to fifth. Evil One and Rexy, the uh, two guys who managed to find their way yeah. to the back of combo in sixth and seventh. Yeah, Vintage just got in. Vintage just went a bit wide and got into the dirty stuff there, giving the um, giving the uh, position back to the Antichrist there. But again, the Lexus yeah. is just showing that power down the front straight. Pagani moving up to ninth as well, followed by K-Boy. Tombo finding his way back up to 11th now, with Hammy on the back there and Gas and Greg all the way back down in 13th. But CCH is oh. own, owns the fastest lap of the race now. And uh, yeah. he is following Rip Doc around the circuit. So CCH is moving, not parking that McLaren up. That massive battle group for fourth. There's so much action happening from uh, Antichrist all the way through to Vigani. Um, this crossing yeah. up, they're going side yeah. by side. <laughs> Such a massive group. They're pretty cars. much three wide now. The tri Tombo's trying to make it four wide, but there's no room. There's Staggered going through the corner. Pagani's taking the wide line. He finds the fence. K-Boy up to the back of him. The drag race between Pagani and Vintage in the Lexuses, and then Tombo and K-Boy in the Mustangs. Hammy's got the front row seats of this battle, sitting back there in the Lexus with a bag of popcorn. <laughs> Uh, yeah, how do you feel for having me in the 8.6? six? Doesn't have the power to keep up with these boys. Yeah, but it does have the fuel saving. So uh, old Hammy may be suffering uh, up to a second a lap slower in uh, terms of pace, but he's probably going to make up a good four seconds in the pits, possibly. I think he'll yeah. be able to no stop. Well, I think everyone else is probably going to be taking on about ten to thirty percent of fuel, just depending on how well you save. Yeah, do you, do Probably you do up to no 40 percent as well for those who really push the rev limiters. Do you do a no stop and just, and grab some tires and just keep on doing uh, qualifying lap after qualifying lap, or you just put in a little bit of fuel just to make sure you can make it to the end and get fuel safe? Well, it depends how you're going, but if you scroll through and you have a look at Tam Hammy's tires there, unfortunately you won't see that on the stream. But Hammy, uh, not no tire wear at all basically. He's got brand new rubber still. God. Just showing the skill of Hemi and how he can uh, muscle his car around the track. 
there. So that battle pack for fourth is still not resolved as well. Rexy leads them away, away around the track at the moment. Antichrist hot on his heels and Evil One hot on his heels. As an Evil One sends the move up the inside, he's going to have the outside for this one. So Antichrist is going to take that position back. Oh. They're both Ooh. wide. Everyone, even Troy's wide. Yeah, Bioware Troy's coming in... into play. And I think Troy's going to make, uh, make that position on Evil One as we speak, coming down, breaking late into that blind corner. Yeah, so Troy finding his way up to sixth there, Ooh. now in the toe of Antichrist, who's lost a bit of time to Rex. Rex has been given a hall pass to go and send it and catch up to the back of the top three there. I'm pretty nice sure, work, Rexy. Um, K-Boy got hung out to dry as well, dropping um, from eighth right down to uh, 11th, well behind uh, uh, Hammy and that group fighting for fourth. Yeah, well, Pagani and Tombo now finding their way up to some slipstream. They've found each other again. They are your one and two uh, position finishers for race one. So they're going to work together to hopefully get through this pack of cars. They're not out of it just yet. They are they are in congestion, but uh, the smartest thing for them to do now is uh, make the move where they can without losing too much time, but just save fuel. Save fuel, make it up in the pits. With a refuel rate that we uh, we have here, it's, uh, it's definitely wise to save fuel. You, you will notice the difference. Definitely, I think, um, it's the, the, I can guarantee you, What's going to win this race, especially for that group of boys and how you're going to lead from people, is how you're going to save fuel. Yeah, we'll jump back up to the lead just for a quick second here. Check up on Rip Doc. He's pulled out seven tenths on CCH now. So CCH has dropped into the grips of Nightwalker. So two McLarens battling second and third at the moment. Though CCH must have made an error there. He's 1.1 seconds off his normal pace on that last lap. So yeah, Ripdog's still shaping up to uh, to walk away with this one. We have to go back to the Battle for Fifth. They are tripping yeah. up left, right, and center. I think this is where the early action is happening as we speak. As um, Troy HQ comes from seventh up to sixth, just doing a move on um, by uh, Bagani just before then, and um, Tombo. Yeah, so Tombo's found two positions there. He's gone from ninth to seventh. He's now looking for sixth from Troy HQ as well. Oh, there's oh, contact. Oh, no. Oh, it's a bit messy. Oh, it's a bit laggy. Yeah, Tombo's it's a glitching bit a bit. jumping around. Even on the stream there, it's a bit laggy. I'm not sure if that's Tombo or the room. Yeah, I think that's Tombo. No, I think, yeah, it's definitely Tombo. And Pagani's lost out there, hasn't he? Back to ninth. Yeah, Pagani did start at eighth, but they find their way up to seventh, and then, uh, yeah, Pagani back down to ninth. So very frustrating for Pagani right now, I imagine. He won the first race, so he's got the pace to fight through the field here. He's just a um, few, few incidents. As I say every time, I mention it all the time on the stream, so you've got to pick your battles. And when you don't, this is what happens. So, uh, yeah, everyone everyone fighting Pagani, not letting him through, whereas if he's got the pace, it may be the smarter thing to let him through. Use that slipstream and let him pull you through the field as well. There's three Lexuses together now with Pagani, Evil, and uh, Vintage Racer. So they've all found each other. Yeah, and then the funny thing is they're all on the same team as well. I'm surprised they haven't uh, some team marching on it, especially um, Gandhi being the, uh, the team owner for Team Lexus, not putting some moves saying, hey, guys, I'm a little bit faster than you at the moment. Let me go through. Yeah, I think team orders are a little bit frowned upon the, in the wheel-to-wheel. -wheel. We just like to let people race as they go. Fair is fair. But I uh, wouldn't be surprised if there is something in the background. A lot of people will be in their own party chats having some discussions. That's Tombo's gonna make it. still lagging yeah. all over the place, but he's found his way up to fifth. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if Antichrist just conceded the position just to get rid of the lagging car behind him. But whatever the case is, Tombo's up to fifth now. 3.3 seconds away from Rexy, who's in another Mustang. Yeah, my, I think Rexy's having a very lonely race there. Three, uh, three seconds ahead of Tombo and the boys, and seven seconds, seven seconds behind the leading three, so yeah, just lapping like it's qualifying, I reckon that's what Rex is doing, just saving the tyres and probably thinking about um, pit strategy as well as we're coming up, probably lap eight, coming towards the end of lap eight where everyone's going to dive in for 
fresh rubber yeah, and we, fuel. We open the pit window now for the undercut. So anyone who wants to break it into a 7 and a 9 is going to do so now. You will gain a little bit of time with the undercut lap while you're on fresh tyres and everyone's on old tyres. But then, uh, yeah, it's going to balance itself out at the end. But you might get your track position. So maybe someone like Pagani, who's been uh, stuck in... Oh, actually, he's managed to dispatch everyone. He's got clean track. I was going to say, if he was still stuck battling, it might have been wise for him to drop back with that fresh rubber and then make sure he jumps to people who are battling in front. But uh, he's got clean track. Vintage Racer enjoying the clean toe now as well. So Pagani just got all the work to do now. 2.6 seconds to find the back of Tombo. And Tombo, 3.2 seconds to find the back of Rexy. Up to the lead now, CCH has managed to claw Ripdock in to under a second now. Wow. So CCH now finding the slipstream. Nightwalker on the back of them too, seven tenths away from uh, CCH. So they're all together, separated by only 1.6 seconds. Yeah, this battling up front could bring uh, Rexy back into the picture. It could, yes. Uh, just doing a bit of a fuel update as well. Ripdock, uh, just over a quarter. Everyone else a little bit over. I'd say Nightwalker and CCH even. Probably got 5% more than uh, CCH, uh, than Ripdock, sorry. Yeah, I think uh, definitely if they're all jumping in the pits at, um, coming into the end of this lap, I think uh, CCH and Nightwalker are going to leapfrog Ripdog. Yeah, I definitely agree there. Rexy using a bit more fuel than everyone else. He's, uh, he's just under a quarter now. Tombo on a quarter. Pagani probably got the most fuel in the field at the moment besides Hammy, who we expected to have the most. So uh, Pagani might make up some time on Tombo in front here. And the Hammy, just the look how much fuel he's just saving. He's going to have no time in the pits. Yeah, Hammy's only going to need to take on about 8% of fuel by the looks of that. He might take more on just to rev the car yeah, out yeah, a bit in closing in. stages. That's so easy. Nightwalker stays out. Nightwalker yeah, stays out for a nine lapper. There's surely no way he's going to do a no stopper. Surely no way. Antichrist stays gonna, out as well. That's going to bring. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. So everyone else is in. CCH jumps Ripdock. So CCH is now ahead of Ripdock. CCH is your provisional leader. That's interesting, both Nightwalker and Antichrist staying out. Yeah, we know Nightwalker's good on his tyres, and not only good on his tyres, but also fast on his worn tyres. So it, Nightwalker always puts consistent laps down, as you can see by the lap times there. They're not on the stream, unfortunately, but uh, he has not ranged out of like a second, basically. He's kept all his laps within a second for nine laps, which is a very good feat. But is, is that going to be enough? Is that going to be enough for the overcut to work? I'm not sure uh, exactly what happened, but uh, Rex has lost a chunk of time. So Rex must have been stationary in the pits for so long. He's now 13 seconds off of Ripdog. It just shows you mm. how thirsty that Mustang was. And Pagani has found the back of Tombo there in 7th and 8th. So Tombo is still lagging around the place, finds the fence, loses that drive, and Pagani takes the position from him. So Pagani was three seconds back on Tombo, but with that fuel saving, he's made it back and he's found his way around. That just goes to show how important the fuel saving is. Just having a look at um, Rexy's uh, fuel, I think he took on a lot more fuel compared to the rest of the field. Now, I know that the Mustang is a bit thirsty, but... Um, no, the yeah, Nightwalker the... blinks. Nightwalker in from position one. Antichrist has made a mistake somewhere. He's got CTH right behind him. So Antichrist we expect to see in as well. He's got halfway up. Yeah, he pulls over to the right. Antichrist in the pit. So CCH is going to retake the lead of the race, followed by Rip, Rip Doc, who is only one second back, picking up a little bit of toe. Actually, uh, Nightwalker like... comes out and doesn't jump any of them. So Nightwalker, Nightwalker resumes the race in third. And that actually shows him that the overcap is kind of on... Um, uh, left a little bit of time, I think. Uh, seven tenths he's lost throughout just staying on the overcut there. Unfortunately, it's just probably wasn't the right arm strategy to go with for race two. Yeah, very rare that the overcut works unless you are being held up, um, which I don't believe Nightwalker was. Yeah, I think with the pace that they'll, the even pace between CCH and, um, and Nightwalker, I don't think he was held up at all. I think he was, he was maybe getting a little bit of assist 
just staying in uh, CCCH's uh, slipstream throughout the first half of the race. Yeah, so Troy uh, was one of the only ones that went for the undercut strategy. He's found himself up in fifth now, behind Rexy there. He's got Pagani hot on his heels, though. So Pagani moving up to sixth after starting the race basically five seconds back. It's a great drive from Pagani. Just showing, again, showing, I was to talk about his skill, just showing his knowledge and skill around this track. Just Pagani just um, coming out and just showing these boys how it's done. Yeah, Lexus uh, going to be strong in all lobbies here. So in lobby A, there's going to be uh, Mountain Goat in the Lexus. There's three of them in this lobby: Pagani, Evil, and Vintage Racer. And uh, even back in lobby C and D, uh, it's still going to be a strong showing there. I reckon they're going to be the cars to beat most of the time if uh, if the people can get the the racing right, not make any mistakes or get tangled up. And as we go through the rest of the field, we've got, um, after Bagani, we've got Tombo still in seventh place, Evil One, Antichrist, try and do the overcut, now stuck in ninth place. Uh, Vintage Racer pretty much holding his, um, holding his own at 10th, with Hammy and uh, Greg with K-Boy having a very unfortunate uh, race too, running out the field. So Pagani looking for the move on Troy now for fifth. He's got the inside. He's got it done. Yes, he just drifts out wide to the edge of the track there. Takes the position away from Troy. Tombo going to look to do the same in that lagging Mustang. Tombo just dancing around. He's listening to Darude Sandstorm in that Mustang, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't know how he's driving with that much lag. Hats off to Tombo doing his absolute best. He Let's probably do doesn't that. even notice. It probably isn't coming through on his end. Uh, just going to jump up to third, though. Nightwalker putting the pressure on Rip Doc, trying to take second place around the outside at the hairpin. He drives around the outside and gets it nice done. Nice drive. Man. That's enough of an overlap to slot in. So Nightwalker with a fantastic move around the outside there. I did mention earlier that the uh, outside move around that hairpin is quite easy to do. It's the type of corner where you can turn it in early or you can turn it in late. Very kind of similar effects, and that's what opens up the ability for an outside move. But that battling is just giving the lead, um, giving more lead to um, CCH there. So those boys need to work together a bit and see if they can um, catch up to CCH. Yeah, CCH, 1.7 second advantage now. So Nightwalker absolutely not in the slipstream now. Although... Uh, just looking at the tyre wear, CCH using a lot more tyre than Nightwalker. Yes, Nightwalker was on the overcut strategy and CCH is on the middle. So if Nightwalker can make that those tyres work for him and find, you know, just over one-tenth a lap, or two-tenths a lap, sorry, he can find himself in the slipstream at the end there and hopefully bring himself into a chance at the victory. Uh, Rick Ross is just going to be hanging on. Um, I don't think uh, Rexy is going to find the back of him. Rexy's 12 seconds back from third there, 14.3 off the lead. But Pagani, 2.7 seconds back from Rex. So the real question now is, will Pagani find the back of Rex? As uh, in the background there, Tombo uh, makes a bit of contact with Troy, possibly due to lagging. But Tombo takes his uh, sixth place back. Evil One looking to stick it up the inside of Troy as well. I've no idea what's going on. This Mustang's all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. And I think Evil One has um, put the move on Troy HQ around that blinding left corner. Yeah, so Troy, Tom, uh, yeah, Troy, sorry, going for the undercut. Uh, hasn't quite worked out for him, for Troy. He finds himself back in eighth with the older tyres and everyone in front. So it's going to be hard ass for Troy. Oh, is Evil oh. One wide now. I think there's a little bit of touch from Troy there around that corner. Yeah, Tombo's still dancing around. He must have Darude Sandstorm on repeat. He's not turning the track off. Tombo's <laughs> having a little bit of a rave. Oh, we, we have to talk to Tombo after so hopefully he can jump on the chat and just tell us what raving music he's listening to at the moment. <laughs> yeah, he's not normally lagging. Oh, Brexy's done a bit of a... That's letting um, Pagani back in. Uh, Pagani made up a, <laughs> making up a lot of time now, tearing chunks out of that. He's probably going to find himself in the slipstream before turn one now. 
Yeah, Rexy just went a bit sideways there. Rexy does love going a bit sideways in that Mustang, using a lot of tyre as well. That front right already screaming out for help. So Pagani only nine tenths back. Pagani in the slipstream. Tombo 1.8, 1.8 behind Pagani. I wonder how defensive, uh, when uh, Rexy's going to start going really defensive, especially trying to yeah, hold Yeah, I'd say you've got to pick your battles, but I believe these two are in the same division, so I think uh, Rexy's probably going to defend. Uh, Rexy's just going to bring them both down the order, but he's going to want to keep them, keep that uh, point deficit from Pagani. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely that's a confirmed. Uh, Rexy and Pagani are in the same Div 2 uh, league at the moment, and it'll definitely be on, on for young and old. Yeah, so uh, the race beginning to settle a little bit, except for the Pagani um, Rex battle, which is going to heat up shortly. Uh, just uh, let you guys know the rest of the positions. K-Boy down in 13th, uh, very much off the pace in terms of lap times. Uh, not sure if he's just not done much practice or maybe making a few errors here and there. But yeah, K-Boy uh, holding the fort down in last. Hammy in 12th. Doing such a great job on his fuel and tyres, but just not being able to make it work for him. Gas and Greg in 11th there, hot on the heels of uh, basically the rest of the pack. Vintage in Antichrist Slip, who's in Evil Slip, who's in Troy Slip, who's in Tombo Slip, who's uh, in just looking for Pagani Slip. Was that a bit of a touch there between uh, Antichrist and Evil one, just on that like, uh, pendulum flip at corner? I think it was, yeah. I think they were a bit dicey finding their positions into that uh, hairpin. But uh, Pagani only four tenths from Rex now. Three laps to go. I can't see Rex fending Pagani off in that angry Lexus for three laps. Uh, Especially make... with so many uh, opportunities for an outside move. Uh, Rex will... did a great job to pull it up there. He'll, uh, Rexy knows how to defend and it will make it very difficult for Pagani. But I think coming up to the, uh, the hairpin, just, be, um, just, after, uh, just at the end of uh, Sector 2, when Bugani's going to do and talking about right where that church is and taking out the outside line I reckon that's what uh, Bugani's going to line up for yeah I think it's going to be uh, turn one personally I think Bugani's going to focus on getting a great exit from that hairpin stick in that slipstream down the straight and then uh, get the move done before turn one knowing that Rexy's going to use a lot of tie and have to break early well, yeah, but I don't think Pagani's going to make the move now. He just went wide around that blinding left-hand corner. So he's losing a little bit of time there. So I think he'll be on for turn one now. Yeah, I think if he gets the move done now, um, he's going to be under pressure for the slipstream uh, on the start-finish straight. So Pagani's probably wiser to not get the move done now, but get it done at lap one and then have that the rest of that lap where uh, the slipstream isn't going to be as powerful Oh, so Rex into the wall. Wide. They both go wide, so Pagani not able to capitalise unless he sends it around the outside. There's not enough of an overlap. Rex sleeps to the outside. So now Pagani firmly in the slip, already taking time out of Rex. We know the Lexus is strong out of the corners. Also, I'm just looking in the chat. Dragon correcting us there. Rex is actually in Div 1. Pagani in Div 2. So they're not fighting for division wins here. They're fighting for cheap steak. <laughs> um, chicken stations, though. Oh, this is going to be a good <laughs> first corner. Oh, the oh there's oh, contact. Oh, oh, it's a bit clumsy. And looking in the background there, Tombo is now within one second. Tombo finds the back of this battle for fourth with two laps to go. So just yeah. like that, they both lost a second and they've opened themselves up to being worst case fifth to now being worst case sixth. Um, just an update on the lead. Uh, Nightwalker is all over the back of CCA. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. We have a battle to the end now. Nightwalker making those new tyres work magic for him. Look at the tyre wear difference there. Nightwalker's got half the wear of CCH. The CCH struggling with lap times now. He's in the, the mid-49s to 50s, and Nightwalker just under mid-49s. Ripdock a little bit too far back to capitalise, but if they keep battling, it could be a three-way uh, three battle for first. 
I think we should just jump down to the position for third, um, for fourth. Brexit Magani just coming out of this drive, that second last corner. Well, um, I think Magani just lost a little bit of time in that blinder. He was up right close with Rexy, but just losing oh, a little Tombo's. bit of time. We got Tombo catching. Yeah, Tombo right on the back of Pagani now. There's two Mustangs and a Lexus, and they're going to have just over a lap to sort it out. Same as for the lead, Nightwalker four tenths back on CCH and closing. It's I now we'll three tenths. I think we'll stay with the uh, leader because there's um the gaps between first, I mean fourth to fifth. So that's the uh, Rexy Gani and Tombo have just opened up. Yeah, it's uh, these guys are the McLaren teammates, as you can tell. So it is going to be interesting to see if uh, they're just going to let the person who's already higher on the leaderboard take that position for more points, or if they are going to try and get that elusive dub for themselves. Warpath cheering for Nightwalker there in the chat. Oh, he's got the run. Oh, well, we've got two wide coming into this bright with um, Rexy and Bagani. And we know you can make it stick around the outside. The Nightwalker doesn't break late, though. He pulls it up for the apex, going for the undercut, maybe. I reckon we should quickly jump off the fourth, just coming into this um, late uh, corner for, at the church for fourth position here. As Rexy goes defensive. And from P making Pagani work on the outside. Oh. Can Pagani... Oh, he's going to get it. No, Rex is getting super loose there. So just going to report to you guys, the lead is resolved. CCH has the uh, drive out of the last corner to take the win from Nightwalker, but we'll stay on board with this yeah, battle for fourth. Oh. Oh, yeah, but Garni just pulling it up. Just pulling it up. Rexy did exactly what the guy did in the first race. Parks it on the apex and just drives away with it. Yeah, He's fantastic it. effort there from Rexy to defend from an angry Lexus with those tyres for three laps. Pagani, great drive to get from five seconds back in last up to fifth. You've got to commend Pagani there. Tombo, also a fantastic drive from sixth, losing a whole chunk of time after getting punted. Troy, the only overcut, the only undercut strategist there, finishing in seventh. Vintage Racer in the Lexus for eighth. Evil one ninth. Gas and Greg tenth. Hammett to the bone in eleventh. Antichrist is going to take twelfth after falling all the way down the order due to no fuel. <laughs> fuel, yeah. Yeah, so he's just going to cross the line with a two-minute twenty lap time. <laughs> and uh, K Boy, as we mentioned earlier, is uh, K Boy's had a pit stop at the end by the looks of it. He's got I fresh think... rubber on, so the race gets worse for K Boy. I think we've just gone for the bustle lap there. Just, just to recap the top three, because we did cover that one, CCH is your race winner in the Marlboro McLaren. We do allow cigarette sponsorship to be viewed on this stream, unlike the mainstream motorsport. <laughs> uh, Nightwalker, after putting a lot of pressure on for the closing laps, takes second, and Rip Doc, who led most of the race, is uh, your third place getter. I think CCH uh, is redeeming after a very uh, poor uh, poor race one. Coming up with the race win for uh, race two. So good on uh, CCH. Yeah, fantastic driving for everyone in that lobby. It's a little bit scrappy, but uh, with connection issues and stuff in play, uh, we do we do kind of see that happen somewhat regularly. But, uh, we have uh, lobby A being streamed to you guys in uh, just under half an hour now as well. So uh, make sure you grab some food, grab a drink, and uh, stay tuned for that one. But this has been Lobby B coverage, round six at Sardinia. Pagani taking out the first race, and CCH taking out the second.